Hi, welcome back to section 10.7. The last thing we're going to talk about is powers of i, especially things bigger than i squared. <clears throat> so, I have a nice little table here with the, all of the expanded forms for you, and I'm hoping that you guys start seeing some patterns, okay? So, if we just have i with an exponent of 1, that would just be i, which is i. If we have i squared, that's i times i, which is negative 1. If we have... Here's the bigger ones. If we have i to the third, that's i times i times i. So i times i would be negative 1. So now you've got negative 1 times i, which would give you negative i. If you've got i to the fourth, well, that's four i's multiplied together. So you're going to have a pair here, which is a negative 1, and a pair there, that's negative 1. And negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. All right, what if you have an i to the fifth? Well, that's five i's multiplied together. One, two, three, four, five. All right, we've got two pairs of, of i's squared, so that would be a negative one, a negative one, and just an extra i afterwards. So negative one times one, negative one is positive one, and one times i is i, all right? What about i to the sixth? That's six i's multiplied together. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I've got an i squared here, an i squared there, and an i squared here. So that's negative one times negative one times negative one. Well, there'll be a negative one times negative one is positive one times negative one again is going to give you negative one. All right, then we've got i to the seventh. Well, that's seven i's, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, I'm just circling the pairs of i squareds because I know i squared is negative one. So I've got i squared times i squared, or i squared times i squared times i squared times i. So that's negative one times negative one, which would be positive one times negative 1, which would be negative 1, times i, which would give me negative i. All right, last one I'm going to do is i to the 8th, because after that, I think everybody's arms get tired. That's too many i's. Here's 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, circling all my pairs here. So there are four pairs of i squareds. So that's four negative 1's all multiplied together. Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1 times another negative one would make it a negative one, and times one more would make it a positive one. So what you're gonna see is this pattern, i, negative one, negative on, i, one. i, negative one, negative i, one. And I promise you, it's just going to continue doing the, that same four piece pattern again, and again, and again, and again, and again. Uh, so what you can do, because we know it's a basically a pattern of four, because if I have like i to the hundredth power, you are not going to want to write i a hundred times and figure out which one of those four choices it is, okay? So what you can do is basically take your exponent of your i, you can divide it by four, and then look at the remainder, okay? So if the remainder is zero, that means it's just i. If your remainder is one, you know, you get like a one fourth or a 0.25 uh, when you put it in the calculator, then that's going to be negative one. If your remainder is two or a 0.5 when you put it in the calculator, that'll be negative i. It'll be just like i squared. This is like i to the zero, which is one, right? I just realized I'm off by one art. <laughs> okay, ignore everything I just said. Goodness, I'm like off by one. If your remainder is zero, it's one. Goodness. If your remainder is zero, it's one. That's like i to the zero power, which is one. If it's an, a one, that's like i to the first power, which is i. If your remainder is two, that's like an i squared, which is negative one. And if your remainder is three, then that's like an i to the third which was negative i, okay? So basically use this for the remainders. So if your remainder is zero, if it just divides evenly, it's one. If your remainder is a one, it's an i. If your remainder is two, it's a negative one. And if your remainder is three, it's a negative i. And then we can 
kind of align it with that pattern that we just saw in the table. All right, so let's do a couple. In example six, first one I have is i to the 28th power. So if I take that exponent, the 28, and I divide it by four, you get seven. It divides perfectly, which means the remainder is zero. So this is equivalent to i to the zero power, which is one. Anything to the zero power is one. Okay, what about another one? What if I've got i to the 39th power? Well, if I take that exponent, the 39, and I divide it by four, well, let's see, four goes into 39 nine times. Nine times four is 36, and 36 and 39 are three apart. That's nine and three quarters if you wanna do it in a mixed number because that shows me that my remainder is three. So my remainder is three means that i to the 39th power is equivalent to i to the third power, which is much easier to do. And if you're like, oh, I don't have these memorized, I think you can do i to the third power, okay? That's not that bad. That's negative one times i, which is negative i. All right, what if I have i to the negative ninth? Well, a negative exponent means it's the same thing as one over i to the ninth, right? If I do nine divided by four, four goes into nine two times. Two times four is eight, which has a difference of one. So that'd be two and a fourth. So my remainder is one. This i to the ninth is equivalent to i to the first power, which is this i. So now I've got one over i, and then hopefully something in you is saying, but we can't have an i in the denominator. We just spent a whole bunch of time rationalizing. You're right, but it's not that bad, right? I'm just gonna multiply by i and multiply by i, because i times i is i squared, and i squared is negative one. In the numerator, one times i is i, and then I can just divide by the negative one. i divided by negative one is negative i. So you can see how we can kind of navigate to get there uh, using the remainder. Now it's your turn. You guys get to try one and show me how much you've learned.